Hey, my friends, Marlon Gibbons. Thank you for joining me here at Music in the Making. Today, I'm going to give you a few tips on submitting to music libraries. And although I've done a few videos like that, um, that's kind of what inspired this video because those seem to be um, pretty good for engagement. Uh, a lot of you seem to find those tips helpful. So I thought every few weeks I would kind of do this, you know, top three, top five tips um, when submitting your music to libraries. So stick around and we'll get to them. Cheers. All right, so I just want to quickly explain my objectives with these these tips videos as it relates to production music and, and library music, that kind of thing. Um, I'd like to think that I'm helping you, the music producers and creators, increase your chances of being accepted into these catalogs and, and libraries, but at the same time, starting those relationships off on the right foot. You know that old adage, you only get one chance to make a first impression. I'd like to help you with things that you can do to start those relationships off right. So much more than just the music itself. It's your etiquette and your communication and your file management and all that kind of stuff and even the, even the contracts. Um, I'd, I'd like to think that it helps everybody. So that's kind of why and what I'm doing with these videos. Okay, so tip number one, and it's kind of an important one, start now, no, start yesterday writing music for the Olympics. The 2018 Olympics are happening in mid-February and there is going to be such a huge demand for music. There's gonna be so much content and right out of the gate, let me clarify something. I'm not talking about fanfare, big trumpets and horns and orchestral type stuff. Um, sure, that'll, that'll be there, that'll be used, um, but that's not what I'm talking about. Think about how much coverage there is going to be on all different sorts of of um, topics related to the Olympics. Um, think about just as one example. Think about uh, athlete profiles um, or team profiles. They'll they'll talk about how they got there, what they did to get there. They'll they'll talk about their emotions. Um, put yourself in the, in the shoes of, of a, an athlete and think about the gamut of emotions. Uh, being there, from everything from fear to to triumph to heartbreak to, um, um, I, I don't know what else. There's it, it's all of it. Think and think about the music that will go under these different segments. So, um, it, really, what I'm saying is that there's going to be so much. It, it could be sad. It could be happy. It could be anything anxious sounding. It could be like energetic. Maybe you write electronic music, and, and they they could show highlights of what they did. To train to get there and it's like super epic and 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 um you know almost like trailer music like just go um so it, it's all kinds of different music i don't want to say write one style of music but just think about the different emotions and all the different coverage and, and i just gave you a couple examples which are you know athlete profiles and and maybe a history of their training to get there um and and they might even cover some athletes that that lost or got injured or, or couldn't make the Olympics or got so close to the Olympics and then for whatever reason couldn't go. Um, and think about all the underscore music that, that, that would cover those, that gamut of emotions. So Olympics, start now. And I don't care what genre you write. If, if you kind of focus on emotion, there, there's a place for your music in there. So that's my, my tip number one. Think about the Olympics and write some music that could potentially support any of the, the different um, coverage that they're going to, to have. All right, tip number two. It sounds really unimportant and kind of petty, but if it doesn't ruin your chances, especially if it's a first impression, uh, at the very least, it's embarrassing. You don't want a library to come back to you and advise you or, or tell you of this, which is once you've stemmed out or, or printed your stereo master file and, and lay all your stems, listen to them before you package them up to submit. Listen to them front to back, not passively, listen to them intently and listen for clicks and pops throughout the whole thing if anything happened. And this is especially true if you're bouncing to disc uh, offline and you're not listening to it as it bounces. But listen to all your tracks that you're going to submit, stems and, and stereo files front to back and really listen to the intros and the tails. Um, make sure there's no clicks going in, no clicks going out, uh, or no pops, which sometimes happens, especially if you're using sample libraries. Sometimes when it engages 
if you haven't set your your CC parameters, or or you think, you know, when you're listening to it and you're not actually bouncing down, the song will play through and you'll hear a nice fade. However, when you select your regions to to bounce down, sometimes when it bounces, when you hit the end of your selected regions, it just abruptly stops. Now, when you were listening to it and not bouncing, yeah, that tail fade it had a nice fade out but you didn't realize that's because it played past the regions that you had selected when you bounced. Does that make any sense at all? Just listen to your tracks, make sure that, that the, the tail is nice, there's a nice fade there, um, and coming in it is nice too. So that's that's my, my tip, um, is just to make sure that you've listened intently to all the files that you're you're submitting to the library. Okay, tip number three, and I'll be honest, this is definitely a, a do as I say, not as I do. I'm constantly struggling with myself on, on, on this, this point as well. Don't make it busy. You don't have to have a huge session uh, with, with just endless amounts of tracks to have a great piece of music. And, and although, yes, there's some incredible music out there that have huge session files behind them, what I'm suggesting to you is that in the interest of improving your production quality and and spitting out volume at a good production level, try and write at least a couple of cues with a minimal amount of tracks and then limit yourself to, I don't know, let, let's say five or six tracks is, is all you can have. And choo so choose your sounds wisely in that case and let your main focus be a specific emotion tension or heartbreak. I mean, you could even do it with one instrument. You can do it with a piano or a guitar or, or a violin or something like that. My point is, try and do a few where you're not building these huge sessions. You can sometimes lose focus of what that track is supposed to do, which is support a scene and support another, as I said, emotion. So try and keep it simple and, and keep to the objective of the track. To kind of support what I'm saying, um, as I've said before, a lot of the tracks that I find are placed into TV um, are tracks that have been stemmed down or reduced versions of, of the, the master full mix stereo file. So, so just try that. Try writing at least a couple um, and keep in mind the theme or the, the um, emotion that you're trying to um, nail. Uh, try and just focus on that as opposed to having a huge busy session um, and see how that works for you. And that is it. Those are my three tips this week for increasing your odds in getting into libraries and, and starting those relationships off right. As always, I, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much. And don't forget to find me on my other social media feeds all in the description. Cheers, my friends, and we'll see you next week.